Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to show you Sinusido. I hope that it's pronounced in the right way from Alex Nazarov. It's an interesting uh, sine wave um, synth which supports uh, um, equal division of uh, octaves. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. As you can see, I'm running it inside AUM, but of course you can also run it as a standalone. And um, when you open it, you have this view. Practically, you have two keyboard. You have the upper keyboard and the lower keyboard. And you can extend one or the other, clicking on these arrow, vertical arrow. So if I click on this one, I use only the lower keyboard. If I click on it again, I see both. And if I click this one up right at the top, I can see only the top keyboard. And of course, I click on it again to uh, go back to the default view. If you click on setup, you have access to define, for example, for the upper keyboard, the MIDI uh, mode, omni, -chan omni or channel, and then you can design the channel. It gives you also some nice references here in terms of um, number of key supported octaves and the number of uh, polyphony, which is up to 144 voices. And as you can see, there also is a link here to open a manual, which is really nice. It's a manual written by David uh, Collect, and I really recommend that you, you read that manual because it explains, uh, it explains a lot of the theory behind uh, the synth and the, using, and the use of uh, equal subdivision of octaves, which leads to microtonals. So, um, um, continuing the explanation of the synth, just an introduction really to the synth. Um, each keyboard is split in two parts, and the top part is a normal keyboard. You just uh, um, press on the key to hear sound. Of course, you can lift, you can uh, drag up and down to change the velocity. And of course, you can use AUM to link it to an external keyboard or a MIDI sequencer, for example. Below, you have instead what um, you can use as a holding note. So if I press on a note here, I'll have a, a holding note. And uh, as you can see, you uh, there is this rectangle, black rectangle, which appears. You click on it, and then you disable that holding note. Additionally, as you drag down vertically, you actually introduce modulation to that note. And of course, it's nice to actually see it in operation when you have uh, multiple notes and therefore you, lease, you use polyphony, right? Moving on, uh, up here you have the um, octave, so you can change the position up and down octave. Okay, perfect. And then here, interestingly, you have the number of keys in an octave. At the moment, I'm showing only one octave. It says count one and can increase the number of octaves which are shown. But um, um, interestingly is you can divide that octave by number of keys. In this case, the standard one is 12 keys. This is what we are familiar with. But you can say divide that by 10 keys. And this uh, becomes quite important when you want, for example, to play a melody and then suddenly you want to change the divisions uh, per octave and um, test how it sounds like. So I will show you that in a moment. You see an, uh, an, another button here on the uh, left hand side. If you click on that, you have access to this menu. You have a mute, which of course mute uh, the sound. You have this X here, which is uh, like a panic button. It allows you also to remove any sustained notes. And then if you want to activate glide, double click on glide, and you have activated, which means if you click and hold, of course, then you can drag. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then you have a modulation which is on by default. Now, these bars are quite interesting. The first one allows you to set the velocity for the next note. And underneath, you have the modulation for the next note. And of course, you can drag them up and down to change that. And then if you have some notes which are already playing, you can change the velocity and also the modulation as well. And you will do that for all the notes which are active. Okay, and that's quite in, uh, interesting. As well, you can see here an offset, uh, which allows you to offset the position of the keyboard. Of course, that depends on the number of keys that you have available. Of course, when it goes above the number of keys, always equally comes to zero. And then you have a representation here of the notes which is being played with the frequencies as well. And if you have different setup for keys, you also see a distance from a note in scent as well. Right, okay, so one of the things uh, you could do, for example, just to give you a bit of a taste, so let's say we create a MIDI channel, and um, let's say that we bring in uh, something like step pad, we connect the two, like so, and let's create a little melody here. So let's reduce these, let's keep it simple to four, and then um, just a, a little, uh, ascending scale, though, so an um, a C, E, F, and a G. So let's play. Nothing really exceptional, but now let's try to modify the number of keys per octave. And of course, it will go up from a tone perspective because you have less keys, right? So, and if you have to correct it, then go back to step pad in this case and just lower the octave there. And it's interesting to hear actually the characteristic of that melody changing based on the different uh, number of subdivision for that octave. Um, of course, you can play with two keyboards, if you like, from uh, a type of live performance. And um, and you can experiment, of course, using uh, Sinusido in uh, other context with uh, other uh, AUV3, which, uh, for which AUM is actually quite good. Okay, I'm going to stop here for this short introduction. I hope you enjoy, and as always, See you next time.